Okay, great. Welcome back, everybody. So our section is showing uh, Smart Teller, um, and it's an extension of the apps that you've been seeing earlier. Um, the purpose of Smart Teller or the accelerator for Smart Teller um, was to identify any advanced requirements that we had for App Builder. It was also to point out any areas um, where we can improve on in the product. Um, and this was relevant for usage and speed improvements across the board uh, for optimizations for App Builder as well. It was also to illustrate the capabilities of using multi or nested pages and assets uh, in a complex app scenario uh, and a complex environment working together uh, with dependencies on each other and also using the new data variables. Uh, and then finally, the idea was also with this um, a product to test drive the custom plugins and iron out any of the first time usability issues that we might have with custom plugins. The best way to do all of this then we decided was to build an actual product with numerous improvement cycles um, and we ended up choosing a smart teller project from an existing RFP. Uh, the idea was to create an accelerator or a template which one of the BUs can then take and extend upon rather than starting from scratch for each product. Uh, we used version 18.2.51 to build Smart Teller, um, but our next steps is to upgrade to version 19, which will allow us to run the Smart Teller in desktops, um, like Ross showed a bit earlier, and then also to use um, the themes like Rudy showed as well. Uh, so just before I start, I wanted to give a quick shout out to everyone involved. Um, Ashira and Linesh helped us a great deal with the requirements gathering. Colin was involved with doing the wireframing and helping us out with the designs. Um, Brenda's created custom plugins uh, and development there, and then Eric and Chris Green helped um, build the actual solution. Um, on screen, what I can show here is uh, just a visual concept of, of what we actually built. So the idea is to run in the front office or at the branch of a, of a bank. Um, and then conceptually, we've got two parts. We've got the branch manager and then the actual uh, teller, uh, teller uh, users. Um, the branch manager will then, for instance, log in in the mornings, open up the branch and the vault, which I'll show in a minute. This is the screens that Chris Green actually built. Um, and then the tellers is the people actually serving the clients walking into the bank and there's multiple um, actions uh, or features that, that the, the teller can do which Eric will show in a minute. And then after that um, what we'll do is we'll show you the custom plugins uh, config and also the custom plugin code that we did to uh, extend all of these features on the right hand side. Um, it's important to note that these custom plugins tie closely with the prefabs that Brendan showed us a bit earlier as well. So Brendan showed us how to do advanced uh, custom plugins um, like prefabs with pre-configured data variables. But what we'll show is how we use the prefabs, uh, parts of the prefab um, that uh, Brendan built to actually build custom plugins that fit onto these screens. And we'll show you, I think we're doing the um, status control that we custom built. All right, so I'm going to quickly take you through the branch manager that Chris Green built for us. Um, this is just for the branch manager in the morning opening. I'm opening up the branch. He comes into the branch and then his screen is closed. So there's no open features that he can access because the branch is still closed. So it's also important to note that um, these blocks that you see is configurable and you can add and remove um, uh, statuses or uh, controls as you uh, config or change the template. In this case, we've actually just opened the branch so we can log the date and time of opening. And then what we're doing is we're actually opening the vault and this does then API calls that um, connects up to the host banking system to, to actively open the, the vault. Obviously, you can't close the branch if the vault is still open uh, and vice versa. Top left hand corner shows you some of the branch operations, the branch statuses. In the top right hand corner, you'll see that there's a plugin um, that allows us to do custom graphs and stats. And then on the bottom left hand corner, there are various tools and tellers. So this shows all the tools and tellers linked to each other and active on the floor that day. Um, in, and on the right hand side, we see a summary of the tools and tellers and people that are um, that we've selected. And then in the middle, if you click on the vault inventory, you can see all of the inventory in the actual vault. Uh, on the left hand side, you'll see all of the cash. and You can buy cash from the head office branch if you want to buy 200 Rand notes or actually order a bunch of 200 Rand notes. Then it will be delivered and you will update your denominations available in your vault in the branch. And you can do the same for the US dollars. 
In this specific instance, we're just sending um, 200 Rand notes back to the uh, head office vault. So this is just buying and selling cash features. Uh, you can also see the inventory, such as checkbooks or traveler's checks or um, USD checkbooks available. And then on the right hand side, we've got something called remote approvals. And as you'll see in a minute, um, when when Eric shows his videos of remote approvals, what happens is in the branch, if someone wants, for instance, to uh, withdraw more money than is allowed in their account, let's say their limit is 10,000 and they want to withdraw 11,000 Rand, um, then they need to have a specific approval. Um, and then this is basically a queue that gets created for the branch manager or floor managers where they can come and cherry pick these approvals. And you can do various things. You can, you can um, directly approve or reject the actual um, request or you can ask the client to come to the manager so you can have a one-on-one -on -one session with them before approving or rejecting the, uh, the withdrawal that is above the limit. So all of these blocks can be extended uh, and you can customize this quite heavily. Right, I think that's it from my side. I'm going to hand over to Eric and he's going to take us a little bit through the teller functionalities and what you can do on the teller. Okay, thanks Rick for the introduction. Um, okay, so today I'm going to present the dynamics and the look and feel of the new Smart Teller Accelerator. Okay, so once um, the branch manager has assigned all the tellers, the tills, the cash boxes, the teller will log into Smart Teller and start um, his or her day. Um, the first process of the day will be the teller operations. Um, in this process, the teller will be able to open the till that is assigned to him. Um, he or she will be able to buy cash from the vault when needed, will be able to sell cash where there's too much float on hand. And finally, at the end of the day, um, we'll be able to close the till. So the teller will be logged in will be able to open. So before the, um, the uh, tell is open, um, no elements will be shown, so no, no um, transactions can be done. So the first process is to open the tell. Um, we will start by um, entering the um, opening floats denominations. But first you need to select a batch date and the time of opening. After selecting the floats, the till can be opened. And the status will be, uh, the till states will be changed to open. Okay, here's the queue page. Um, where all the, we have an open ticket and closed ticket tab. The closed tickets is the tickets that's closed and obviously the open tickets are currently the clients in the queue. On the left um, top side, we have some nice graphs that's very customizable and it gives various information about the, um, the clients in the queue, such as um, the average waiting time and so on. The um, teller can also, can also uh, buy some cash throughout the day from the vault and this is done as follow you select your currency and you select the denominations denominations once it's done it will give a successful pop-up you will also be able to sell cash in the same manner you select your currency um, and your denominations and lastly, at the end of the day, the teller will be able to close the till. He will select his closing floats. And finally close the till. Yet again, all the operations in the queue will, <coughs> all the elements will disappear. And the status will be changed to closed. Okay, so then next we're going to um, have a look on where the teller starts serving a client in the queue. Um, firstly, uh, 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 account with identity verification will be done. And 
I will just quickly show a video on how this will be handled. So there's already a client in the queue. Um, if you, if the verification is incomplete, you won't be able to call the next ticket. Um, and this can be done by a chip and pin or a fingerprint. For this video, we're just going to use the pin entry. And it's verified, the status is changed to verified and you'll be able to um, complete your identity verification. And now we're going to move to Customer 360. So Customer 360 is the main page of the um, tr transactional posting. On the top end, we have our um, control bar then we have our nav bar, which you can obviously go to customer 360 or the accounts you want to transact in. And you have different tiles here that you can add information. This is um, nicely customizable as the client wishes to have it. And you can also... Okay, okay and then next we're going to look at the scenario where a client needs to be served at a till but is currently not in the queue. So the teller will be able to open a new ticket on the spot. Let's quickly look how this is done. So we wish to open a new ticket. Um, account identity verification is also needed for this. You can do it by fingerprint, chip and pen, or other such as the ID document. Yet again, we're gonna use only the chip and pen the client will be verified and we will need to select a priority, the type of query that the client wishes to be served. And there's also a field for message to tell her. Next we open, the account lookup was done and we are redirected to customer 360. And I'm just showing how the look and feel of Customer 360 again. And the status is opened um, and the person is in the queue. Okay, next we're gonna look at the scenario where a client was helped but no transaction was done, such as opening accounts or statement printing. Uh, the teller will be able to need to close the ticket and this will be done in the control bar on the top. I'm going to quickly go through. As you can see, there's the close ticket tab where all the close tickets are situated in. Um, so in the control bar on top, you'll be able to close the ticket. And now the ticket is closed and out of the queue. And I'm just gonna quickly show that it's actually the actual person in the queue. Right, so let's start with the actual transaction, transactional um, processes. Um, for this accelerator, we included mixed deposits, withdrawals, bill payments, transfers, EFTs, and non-transactional processes like um, statement printing, cards, limits, and signatories. Let's start with mixed deposits. Um, all the transaction posting is follow uh, uh, um, the same processes um, as follow. You obviously open your ticket, you select account that the client wish to do the transaction in. Um, here you can see all the options. Uh, I'll pause it for the next one. Okay, here's the deposit screen. I mix the deposit screen. I'm just gonna quickly pause. Um, so you'll be able, all the screens have similar layouts. Um, it will always have a status window. There will be account mandates and depending on um, the process have different add-ons. 
So yeah, we're gonna scan a check and add a cache. The entries are added. Next, you'll need to do the verifications. So for the check, you have your front and back of the check, um, the code line um, correction, you can enter amounts. You have your checklist. For the cash deposit, you can select your denomination. And now the status has changed to ready. Once the status has changed to ready, you can actually post the transaction. If it's invalid, you won't be able to access the post or um, we'll get to manager approval in the next video. Um, once you'll be able to post, you'll, you'll post and a pop-up will appear where you have all your transactional summary. You'll have your receipts you want to, for check or cash. You have your mandates and the next step will be authorization. This can be done by either chip and pin, fingerprint, or signature. Um, we used a signature simulator for um, for this demo. You'll be able to post. The posting is completed, and you'll return to the queue. Just for insanity, I just um, show that the transaction is actually recorded. Okay, that is mixed deposits. Up next, we have our withdrawals. So the same process flow, you open your ticket. You go to your account options. So your account op options are... Uh, now you select your withdrawal denominations client wants to withdraw 200 rand or 100, 200 rand notes. Um, here you can see that um, the amount is over 10,000 rand, meaning a manager approval is required. Um, now the manager approval button is um, accessible. You'll be able to do remote verification, username, a password, fingerprint or RFID card. Once the approval is completed, um, the manager approval completed in the sales window will be turned to green and you'll be able to post and the same you have your transaction summary you have your receipt your mandates you need to authorize the transaction via chip fingerprints or signature and once this is done you'll be able to post the transaction to post the transaction completed and just again I'm just going to quickly show that it was recorded the amount was 20,000 and it was a withdrawal okay cool next we're going to bill payments which is a public beneficiary payment Go to bill payments. So the status window will always have an indication of what the first step of the teller should be. We also inserted some um, info buttons for sales um, persons to know the accounts from. You enter your reference number. Here you can see the payment option is exact, so the amount field won't be accessible. But if you have a payment option of any, you would, would be able to select any amount. So the payment option is any, you can enter your amount. Obviously the lookup is done, the bill information and the bill account information is shown. You are ready to post, um, no manager approval is required and the posting continues. We have your receipt, transaction summary, just like all of the And then you can do authorization. We're going to use a, just a signature simulation. We post our transactions, close our ticket, and return to our queue page. Just quickly showing that it was recorded. 
was account to uh, set the feds and amount of 100 rand. Okay, and then we have our transfer transfers. This is into account transfers. So you go to your account options, you select your transfers. Here, all your accounts will be in the this table. Um, this person only has one extra account, but if there's more accounts, it will be shown in the table. So you have your reference, you'll be able to post, shows your um, transaction summary, your transfer, uh, your receipt. Also, you have your mandates and signatories. You'll be able to authorize it. And then, same as usually, posts, close ticket, and return. And just quickly to show that it was recorded, view associated transactions, and then you have your outwards and your inwards to your other accounts. And lastly, we have of our um, transactional processes, we have our EFT payments. Yet again, you go to your account options, go to EFT payments. Here you can select, we also have an information button for accounts. You can select your bank. Cybran Bank is um, from bank, so a lookup is required. Once the lookup is done, um, the lookup account will be successful. You'll be able to enter your amount. It's ready to post and you can post. Here's your transactional summary. Yet again, you need to authorization. I'm just gonna use a signature and we're gonna post. And just quickly show that it was posted. And now for the um, non-transactional processes is our statement printing, our cards, our limits, and our signatories. I'm just gonna quickly go through this. So you can search your transaction history. You can search and on the fly, a report is generated for the teller print and you can just select print and on the fly you have your um, statement we also added some features like you can add your cards um, add new card deactivate the status um, also add the card limits to it okay and then you also have your limits which is your account limits, like your minimum balance, maximum balance, your daily spend. And obviously we have our signatories, which you can add a signatory. Um, and you'll know, just save a signatory. Okay, and lastly, I'm just gonna quickly go through um, the custom plugin config just quickly show how easy it is and um, how easy it's to use for various applications. So in App Builder, you'll have your pages, your assets. Um, you're just going to have a normal um, page. So this is the navbar as seen in um, Spot Seller, and we have our status window. The first step will be obviously to um, select your header property. So I used a data variable um, and my data model I used was just a normal table, which is the status window. I'm gonna use the header status field and the status field to display my information. So for the nav bar, I'm gonna show all my entries in that table. The field I'm selecting now is just for um, the display um, 
under the header. So obviously you have your header and then your statuses in the status. So I'm going to use all items. So I have three statuses. Um, and for my status window, I'm going to use the current item bounded to the um, data variable. So that is my the status field. And then I'm just going to quickly assign my field, which is in the body. And that's my status. Okay. Now you can assign your co um, colors. I'm just going to make it one, two, and three. So if there's a one or two and a three, the different colors will be displayed. And I just entering some icons as well. And quick preview to give you an idea what I just did here. So, um, as you can see, here's the nav bar. We have three headers, header one, header two, header three. And in the fields, we have a status one, a status two, and a status three. So if you click on status on um, item one, it should give header one and status one. And as you can see, one and one is our um, what um, keywords. We, it changes as we go through. So two was purple and two is again. Um, now I'm gonna just add some more advanced, just to show that you can do, add any amount of keywords and it will change as well. So it can be very complex um, keyword keywords to assign to, and this is all in variables. So you can modify it as you wish. So, so it's very customizable. Cool. So we added three extra keywords. So now the haters will also have different colors, as you can see on top. And still the, the um, statuses has different colors as well. And so we use this to implement it in Smart Seller. I'm just going to quickly show you. So we have our status window um, on the bottom and you have different keywords you can assign to. So say if the bank name um, is not selected, it will um, display in the status window. So we basically assigned various um, keywords so that the validation can be done. And I'm just gonna quickly show you how it changes on on the spot. So, so as you can see in the status um, window, um, you need to select a bank to start EFT payment. Once it's selected, it changes and it's other bank, so no lookup is required. You just need to enter your um, your ba bank account and um, account holder. And I'll change to Cyberbank again. So lookup is required. You need to enter it. Once the lookup is successful, yet again, the status window changes to lookup successful. And you have sufficient funds. It also, you can do validation rules to set to like limits. And, and yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna hand over to Brenda's. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, so um, I will just go look at the code for doing the status window plugin. So when you start up a new plugin, you've got three sections. You've got your common section, which is where all the properties go. That's what uh, Eric just configured um, on his site. All those properties are here. Um, and then you've got a design section, which is that's displayed in app builder and lastly you've got a runtime section which is displayed when you actually run the app or when um eric previewed uh the plugin so 
you can see the comment section has got several files in it, um, properties and the classes. So you'll put your custom classes in classes with the design and the runtime. Um, you've got the same amount of uh, files. HTML will be your front end, HTML, CSS will be where is ever custom CSS is applied and TS is where all your logic um, will be for the plug plugin. Okay, so now we can see we're in our properties and this is all the properties um, that the user uh, or the implementer can configure in App Builder. Um, so I used an array for m to allow for multiple keywords and field mappings and those are defined here in my classes where I do my custom classes. So you can see there's lots of properties going into this. So here in my TS, it's a little logic. Um, it's not a lot of logic for this specific plugin. Um, basically two methods that handles the color um, and icon changes, depending on if the keyword's found. Um, and this is the HTML part. Uh, you can see again, not a too much for this plugin, but it can get very complicated with other plugins, depending on what you would want to do with your HTML and your rules. And um, if you're looking for the source code of this plugin, you can find it at this link, and there is a wiki for how to what each property does and how to use the plugin um, at the link here. Um, the, the other custom plugins are also um, found at the links. Right, and that's it from my side. Any questions? That's great, thanks Brendas. I've been answering a whole bunch of questions on YouTube, so I think that we've covered pretty much everything. If there are any additional questions that uh, you didn't get to ask on YouTube, you're welcome to contact any one of us um, on Teams and we'll be happy to uh, to help.